Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. The Lord Most High, the Lord Most High. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O wonderful, awesome, gracious, oh, magnificent God. Thank you, O sovereign Lord of the heavens and the earth. Thank you, O gracious, wonderful, and awesome God. Thank you, mighty God of Daniel, sovereign God of the heavens and the earth. Thank you, O God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, God of the beginning and the end, God who are the first and the last. You are God all by yourself. You are awesome in this place, almighty God, and I praise you, I honor you, I adore you. I bow down before you. Heaven and earth adore you. If the rocks cry out, hallelujah, so will I. If the trees cry out, so will I. If the stars cry out, so will I. If the seas cry out, so will I. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is the name of our God. How great is our God. How great is his name. He is the greatest one forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we trust in you today. We trust in you to lead us. We trust in you to guide us, to guard us, to keep us from all harm and danger. We trust in you, Holy Spirit of Israel. Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of all the heavens and the earth, Holy Spirit of thunder, Holy Spirit of lightning, Holy Spirit of power, of love and of self-control. Holy Spirit, we submit and surrender every element of our lives to you. Hallelujah. And I ask you this morning to wash us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, we place ourselves squarely in your arms, squarely at your feet. David said, I would rather be in the hands of the Lord than in the hands of man. Father, this morning, this morning, today, this moment, this time, this season, we place ourselves squarely in your hands and we say, Lord, be merciful unto us. Have your way. Do what only you can do. Be who only you can be for your name's sake and for your righteousness sake. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself, O Holy One of Israel. Magnify yourself in this fourth watch hour. Magnify yourself in this fourth watch family. Minister to your people. Minister love. Minister power. Minister joy. Minister peace. Minister restoration. Reconciliation. Minister healing. Minister deliverance. Minister breakthrough anointings. Minister to your people this morning, this day, this time, this season, even tonight as the, as the time is different in certain places. Minister to your people, O gracious, wonderful God, and do what only you can do. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you in this place. Take full control. Put the devil to disgrace. Move him out of this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let every witch and warlock, every demon and devil, every principality and power, every spiritual wickedness in high places, every ruler of darkness, be subdued by your spirit. Be subdued by your holy angels. Be subdued by the fire around your throne. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Father, take dominion over the atmosphere. Take dominion this morning over this fourth watch hour, this fourth watch family. Take dominion. Set up a wall of fire. Set up a ring, O God Almighty, of swords, angels with flaming swords. O God Almighty, cover us from every interfering spirit, every signal jamming spirit, every deceiving, deceptive, hallelujah, spiritual intervention. Everything that the enemy desires to plot and scheme and trap, to distract, delay, derail, or deny. Every spirit of the power of the ear, O oh God, that desires to interfere with the Wi-Fi signals, the signals going out and coming in. Father, may their plans be thwarted and destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every Goliath spirit, every Assyrian spirit, every Amalekite spirit, every Jezebel spirit, every Hittite and Jebusite spirit, every Philistine spirit that wants to attack and destroy that which you are doing in us, through us and for us. They receive fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every foul, unclean spirit sending bad signals to, do, to, to members of this family. Every uh, 
remember every demonic force designed with an agenda to 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 cut this 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 family in two and to separate some from us in the mighty name of jesus christ we declare failure failure to that plan father we call forth a repatriation we call forth a restoration of those who started out with us oh god almighty may they not fall by the wayside may they not be like the 70 who departed through misunderstandings through 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 yeah, inability to conceive the greater and the bigger plan father may they return to their home to return to the place of sacrifice return to the altar of, of, of blessing the altar of the fourth watch in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you lord god almighty that every negative influence every negative word every negative a connotation every negative impartation that satan and his demons and devils have imparted to any member of this fourth watch family that caused them to be confused uh, caused them oh god almighty to to refuse to come back to refuse to be a part of this family father we un, un, unravel that scheme that plot oh god almighty and we declare that we shall not be like evil we shall not allow satan into our ear and we say satan get out of here in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth lord god almighty i ask you this morning to de deliver your people deliver your people from every plan of the enemy every scheme and every trap for you have given us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt us our uh, father gathering is something that helps us not hurts us and so father as we gather this morning as your children gather let nothing let not sleep let not tiredness let not laziness let not slothfulness let not anything god almighty let not busy being under satan's yoke be the portion of any of your people but cause us oh god almighty to set this time apart this time to be in your presence let the words go forth with fire with power with accuracy in righteousness holiness and truth let no flesh glory in your presence oh god i submit my flesh to you i surrender my own soul my own thought processes my own experiences my own culture my own nature my own character i submit them to you this morning oh god and i say lord jesus christ of nazareth i know nothing that could draw men i know nothing that could hold men i know nothing that could keep men i know nothing oh god almighty that could edify exhort and comfort men and so lord jesus christ of nazareth i ask you to take dominion over every fiber of my being today that everything i say will go your way in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth lord i thank you that you have woken up your people i thank you that you have inspired your people i thank you that you have healed and delivered and set free your people i thank you lord god almighty that you have fed and are feeding your people even now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth glorify yourself O oh lord glorify yourself this day glorify yourself let no fourth watch family member be lacking in need of anything for your love your power your divine power has already provided everything that we need for life and godliness and so lord we claim that which you have delivered for us we claim that which you died on calvary's cross to give us we claim that which you rose from the dead to give us we thank you that your divine power is at its maximum at all times and that divine power bless Blesses us that divine power increases us that divine power gives us power to operate the function and so I declare and decree I prophesy O God Almighty according to your word that divine power is in every person hearing my voice this morning that is a member of this family every person hearing my voice that is uh, whose heart is set towards you who has not come oh god to delay the real or deny your purpose from being accomplished but has come to hear from you and to be a part of what you are doing in this time and in this season i declare and decree and i prophesy that an impartation of the power the divine power to move mountains to, to kill every weed operating in our lives sucking the vitamins sucking the 
fruit from our lives sucking oh god almighty the the the, 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 the fruit of the spirit from our lives i declare and decree that we have the divine power to speak to them and to command them to die in the name of jesus christ i declare that the divine power of the lord is arising like 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 a tree growing out of the ground in us this day and we will declare and we will decree a thing and it shall be established in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare that every fourth watch family member every sincere fourth watch family member shall prophesy and shall see an establishment of their prophetic utterance in the name of jesus christ every fourth watch family member shall be like esther travailing for nations in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every fourth watch family member shall be like Mordecai we will not bow to any false God or to anyone who say that they are a God and that they are worthy to be worshipped and praised I thank you Lord God Almighty that we shall see with eyes like an eagle that we shall see through your eyes we shall discern the spirit good and evil spirits we shall discern even the hearts of men i thank you lord jesus that as of today we walk in the fullness of your goodness by your spirit hallelujah that has come upon us and that lives in us your holy spirit are manifesting as the spirit of wisdom and understanding i receive it as the spirit of counsel and might i receive it as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord i receive it i thank you lord jesus christ that we function efficiently and efficiently Effectively in the fruit of the spirit in our body soul and spirit mind will and emotion and the gifts of the spirit hallelujah through our words our hands our feet wherever we go the gifts of the spirit are available to manifest for your glory and for your namesake i thank you this day oh gracious wonderful god that we the fort watch family members are glory carriers father there is nothing that can stand against us no man shall stand against us all of our days in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of boldness, uh, strength, and courage is upon each of us, and we walk in the fullness of your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy this day that we are strong and mighty through you to the pulling down of every stronghold. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy that we are mighty men and, and women of valor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are like Gideon. We tear down demonic altars. We cut down groves. We prepare for war. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy this day that every fourth watch family member are like David's mighty men of valor. God, we lose no battle. We win every time we go. Everything that we do, we are excellent, successful, prosperous, uh, experience good success. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, that we are like David with a heart after your own heart a heart that repents a heart that submits a heart that turns a heart that is able to recognize when we have heard and to say father forgive me father forgive me Lord, but more than anything else, a heart that when others offend us, when others hurt us, we can say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they have done. Lord, give us a heart like you gave Stephen. Let an anointing be upon us like was upon Paul, upon Peter, upon Stephen, oh God Almighty, upon Philip. Father, may you find favor with us like you found favor with Philip, that you will send us an assignment, God, that we won't have to take a car or a bus or a taxi or we won't have to drive we won't have to fly we won't have to take a boat but like philip god you will move us from point to point because expediency is necessary ah oh, father god may you move and teleport us to various places to do a mighty work for your glory and for your name's sake in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you this morning oh gracious wonderful god that we are blessed to be a blessing you're anointed and power is upon us to keep us from all harm and danger I declare your goodness and mercy towards us O God I declare that every person hearing my voice now is saved sanctified Holy Ghost filled water baptized spirit baptized with Jesus Christ Yeshua the Mashiach of Nazareth on our minds and we are blessed to be a blessing to our nation our community our families 
Ah, God Almighty, let nothing that the enemy desires to do block us or delay us from becoming who you have called us to become in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glorify yourself this day and let your way be our way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let this mind be in you and let this mind be in me. Let your mind be in us, O God, for we desire to have the mind of Christ like Paul. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God most high. Glory to the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Good morning, family, and welcome to Prophetic Wednesday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Or, or should I say good morning, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is good night in Australia. Hallelujah. And maybe some other parts of the world that are six and seven and eight hours ahead of us. If you are anywhere in the world right now, whatever time zone you are in, I say shalom, shalom to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak peace to your household. I speak peace to your circumstances. I speak peace to your life. Speak peace to your marriage. Speak peace to your future marriage. I speak peace to your children and your children's children. I speak peace to your finances, peace to your health. I speak peace to your mindset. I speak peace to your business in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace to your job. I speak peace, the peace of God, the peace of God. I release the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says that wherever we go, we should take peace and leave peace in the place where peace is welcomed. And so I speak peace into your circumstance peace into your atmosphere where they have been turmoil where they have been uh disrepute where there have been uh, disruptions and, and disagreements. I speak peace into those situations now where there have been nervousness, fear, doubt, unbelief, where there have been war and strife, where there have been envy and greed. I speak peace into those circumstances right now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you need the peace of the Lord, if you need the peace of the Lord about decisions that you have to be making right now, if you need the peace of the Lord, because of circumstances happening in your family, in your, in your, with your children, hallelujah, or with extended family members, I speak that peace right now. I impart that peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so I greet you with shalom, shalom. I greet you in the peace of the Lord. I greet you with the purpose fulfillment anointing of the Lord. I greet you with the grace of God. To do great and mighty things. I greet you with the, peace, the one accord of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May peace be your portion. May love be your foundation. And may faith, hallelujah, be your action in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God most high. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has already done the work. Jesus Christ have conquered. Therefore, we are more than conquerors. We benefit from what the conqueror has already done. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. If you receive peace, if you receive peace into your house, if you receive peace into your circumstances, watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Hallelujah. And so I say good morning to each and every one of you. Special special people of God. Good morning to those of you on Instagram. Bless you. God bless you. Uh, consistency. I don't see much growth in Instagram, um, but I see consistency and I thank God for that. Growth will come in time. We're not about numbers. We're about growth in our lives, growth in maturity, growth in consistency, growth in faithfulness, growth in who God desires for us to be. And so that growth is more important than numbers. Many people have numbers. There are people who have thousands of followers and thousands of viewers and, and, and can make anything go viral. But are they, hallelujah, when they are put on trial, will they fill the vial? Come on, glory to God. And so, yes, numbers are great. I'm not knocking numbers. I wish we had um, 60,000 people watching and, and, and growing in God. But God is who determines that. 
not man. And if man de determines that, then probably God is not in it. Amen? Probably God is not in it. And so we want to focus on the growth, the foundation. We want to be a group of people that has a foundation rooted and grounded in God, rooted and grounded in righteousness, holiness, and truth, understanding each other, understanding what we stand for and what God represents in us and through us. We will not compromise and therefore meet our demise. We will be God's prize. We will be righteous and holy in his eyes because we have made him the center of our existence and who he is, is who we desire to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Too many people today, too many of us as Christians today have compromised and we have uh, blurred the lines. And I heard one woman of God who was a leader in a certain denomination that shall remain nameless at this moment, saying that God's definition, the Bible's definition and translation of relationship and interactions and marriage is 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 not as straightforward as it as it as as it seems or as some people are thinking, and therefore it leaves room for our own um, dissecting and, and and revelation and our own um, 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 uh, description or definition of what that is uh, so that there can be uh, wheat and tear hallelujah coming together and getting married wheat and tear can raise families how can wheat and tear produce what is right in God's sight it is not possible it is not possible let me tell you, wheat and tear cannot come together and produce what is right in the sight of God. The devil is a liar. And we, as God's people, well, listen, we're not out to offend anyone. We're not, well, let me not say that. That is not true. Sister Quenda, thank you for correcting me. We are out to offend. Jesus offended everywhere he went. He didn't offend because he was set out and say, I am going out to offend some people today. That's not, that was not his heart position, but his heart position of righteousness, holiness, and truth automatically offended those who were not set to pursue righteousness, holiness, and truth. And so the moment you stand on the word of God, the moment you become resolute that righteousness, holiness, and truth is your mandate, position, and purpose, you are going to offend. You have to. Because majority of the world, hallelujah, majority of the world does not want to embrace righteousness, holiness, or truth. In these days, people are calling good bad and bad good. And therefore, if they call good bad and you correct them and say that this is good, not bad, they will be offended because it says you are telling them, that they don't know what they're saying. And so people will be offended when you correct them in the right way according to God. Even if you do it in love. I saw somebody says reprove in love. Jesus did just that. He's better than we will ever be. We can only dream of walking certain distances in his footsteps. He walked perfectly from the day he was born till the day he died. We make mistakes along the way though we want to go in the direction that he goes. And so, if he reproved in love and was still rejected, if he blessed and fed and healed and delivered and set free and made whole in love, if he corrected and directed in love, listen, Jesus said to some people, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you will not be a part of me. You cannot be a part of me. And some people, they didn't even say, Lord, what do you mean by that? We know that you are a man of love. We know that you are a man who is, is, is sent from God and, and that you are, you are perfect in all your ways and that you love us. What do you mean by that? Because we're not cannibals. We don't know how to eat flesh and drink blood like that, especially of humans. So explain to us what it is that we're supposed to do. No, they didn't seek that. They were offended. Come on, glory to God. They were offended. Having walked with him, even for a short time, they still did not see the love and the truth. And so why am I saying this? I'm saying this to you, that listen, people of God, you could do everything in the most perfect love there is. 
if love is not what people you're speaking to or the people you're around, the people in your office, the people in your workspace, the people at the school where you teach or where you work, the people in your community, the people who live next door to you, the people in your family. If love is not what they are looking for, when you give love, they will receive love as an attack. They will receive love as advancing towards them in an aggressive way. They will receive love as a negative uh, statement or a negative action and that will be repelled with an action of evil and you will say but how come how did I express love how did I say this as best as I could how could I stand for what is right and yet still my family don't want to speak to me my mother no longer says hello my brothers and sisters pass me as if I don't exist my, my, my co-workers don't speak to me anymore how come that unless you are willing to be isolated for love unless men despise you for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you have to wonder, am I truly pressing in? Am I truly doing and being as the Lord requires? Because when you are, that's when you realize that for man, you are not a star. For man, you are far. But for Jesus, you are a star. For Jesus, you are near and dear. And he will send you everywhere. Come on, glory to God. And so we have to change our whole concept. That's why God has brought forth this team together so that we can know what to expect. We can know what we need to do. We can know how to be put on show because for the longest while we've been walking aimlessly about all the only thing that we have that shines as a light is when we open our mouth and say, I am a Christian. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Quenda says, today, today teachings, preachings are taking the word of God and only feeding people with what they want to hear. S skipping over the passages that need to be heard. Yes, my sister, that can preach. That is so true. Mo a lot, too many of today's preachers and teachers are not preaching the truth about righteousness, holiness, and truth. I said to someone just recently, I said, God is not offended or, um, how did I say it? I said, okay, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. I said, persons will not go to hell for same-sex attractions. Listen to me carefully. Let me make sure that my people know exactly what I'm saying so that if someone caught a piece of what I'm saying and, 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 and send it viral, that you will know what I am saying. People will not go to hell for same-sex attractions because the same way that us as human beings that have opposite sex attractions, when the attraction is manifested, when the attraction is, 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 um, is taking place in an environment, in an atmosphere, we have to bring our minds, bring our souls under subjection. We have to say, wow, that girl look good, but that's not for me. That's a sin if I lost. That's a sin if I pursue and engage in a relationship that is not according to God's will. And so same-sex attraction, just like heterosexual attraction, is only a sin when it is acted on, when the, whether in the mind or in the actual manifestation, when it is acted on. If you find yourself with a same-sex attraction as a child or as a young adult or whatever, you, 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 your, your job is to pray and to resist the devil. It came from Satan. It didn't come from God. Your job is to resist. Find someone. Find someone. I don't care who. Find someone who knows Jesus. Find someone. There are many people, hallelujah, that knows Jesus, that knows how to pray, that knows how to stand in faith. They will cast out that devil. That seed is a seed of unrighteousness, just like the seed of lust, the seed of masturbation, the seed of pornography is a seed planted in us by Lucifer himself through his demons and devils. I'm saying to you that that same-sex attraction is a seed of unrighteousness as well. And so just like any other seed of unrighteousness, it needs to go. So if we, if we, if we water it, by our thoughts, if we water it by the things we watch, if we water it by the things we read, 
then it moves from temptation to manifestation just like the heterosexual ones come on I remember when I first started to have as a young boy um, um, desires and, 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 and needs and, and, and um, emotions and reactions in my body towards the opposite sex and I didn't know what to do with it and so I started to look at magazines I started to look at uh, certain kinds of books and certain kinds of things and certain kinds of programs and watching um, um, uh, pornography and that led to masturbation and that led to sexual proliferation and all these kinds of things and it just spiraled and spiraled and spiraled because I allowed the thought come on somebody are you hearing me this morning I allowed the thought to manifest to morph into a picture into a action inside of me first and then it manifested outside like anything else in life like stealing come on like slothfulness like greed greed starts with a desire greed starts with a desire inside of us oh I need this I need that whether it's clothes shoes uh, there's some of us come on ladies you know what I'm talking about it, you you never see a store with a shoe a pair of shoes you didn't like like me for me it's a watch every time I go into a store that has beautiful amazing wonderful looking watches they don't have to be expensive because I, I can't afford the expensive ones right now but that day is coming but I have to bring that desire that 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 greed under subjection before God allows me or I will have a room filled with watches that I can only wear one at a time do I like more than one watch diversity in how I go of course but I don't need 365 watches I don't need a watch a day that's unreasonable that's that's greed to another level ladies you don't need more shoes than you can wear you don't I'm not saying you should have two pairs or three pairs or four pairs I'm not even dictating how many pairs you must have but you know when you have passed the limit you know when you don't have enough space to put up shoes you know when some of your shoes are dry rotting because they have not been worn in three years that's a sin can I talk truth and you receive it in love it's a sin I'm not being angry I'm not being condemnatory I'm not being cross or miserable I'm saying we must learn what our boundaries are in God come on there are times when I will go somewhere and I just ate my stomach is fairly full or close to full or comfortably um, uh, at a place and, and, and there I'm being offered something nice I'm being offered cake I'm being offered curry goat or oxtail I'm being offered uh, uh, escovitch fish I'm being offered the things that I truly truly like even ice cream and I say well Pastor Marsha is the ice cream person I'll just eat it because it's there but 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 I'm I'm I'm, I'm full I can't take any more I'm, I'm really at that comfortable place and anything else added to it is going to be overload it's going to be more than I can manage it's going to be more than my closet can hold come on hallelujah and so I, I I have to be folding up and stuffing come on you know those kinds of ways the drawer cannot open anymore because we have never seen a top that we don't like a top that we could say no to we've never seen come on hallelujah underwears that we can yes you can you can have too many underwears ladies you can have too many come on because you know what let's be truth can can we be real as a family the, 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 when you wash five or eight or ten underwear and you put them on top the new ones never get rotated because you put the new ones on top of the old ones on top of the new ones the ones that just washed this week so you washed on Sunday and they dried and you put the, 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 the those on top of the ones that you haven't worn yet and as soon as you go in the drawer to get dressed to go out come on I hear some of you ladies saying yes pastor you are so right hallelujah you take up the same ones the same with the clothes and so you have underwears that for a year for a year and a half for two years you have not worn because you have too many yet there are some people in your church yet there are some people in your community yet there are some people who don't have 
have any, who have barely a, a few, they have to wash them when they take them off. But you don't make the effort. And this you now is not a condemnatory you. It is not a judgmental you. It is a us. Because right now, I need to go through my closet because people bless me. I don't buy stuff. I don't buy clothes. God has provided because he's the one. That's how he pays us. That's how God pays Pastor Masha die. He puts people, up, us on people's heart. And they will say, here are some clothes. Here are some shoes. Here are stuff. And as soon as they get to a place where they can't hold in my closet, I have to clean out. I did a shoe clean out and gave away the other day. I need to do some clothes now because I have too many clothes that I have not worn in a good little while. And what happens is when you begin to go through, you see stuff that you have not worn, but they look nice. It's a shame. You see see stuff that you've worn once or twice and they look so good and you try it on and it still fits and you say you know I could wear this somewhere and you put it back down in the basket or in the drawer and it stays there again for another two years the devil is a liar the devil is a liar that's idolatry that's greed that's slothfulness that's everything that is wrong and we must stop it we must stop it we must stop it. Remember, I'm not angry. I'm not condemning you. I am not because I'm, I'm in the same boat myself. But we all, I have to speak the truth even when it affects me as well. I just want you guys to know that I'm not pointing fingers at you. I'm not saying, boy, you know, so anyone would get offended. I'm saying it to us. We must grow. We must mature. We must accept truth because we are not of the father of lies truth must be embraced by us even when it hits us in the ribs and we say ouch because god only speaks truth and so when you hear truth you hear god and when you hear god we must obey god we must respond to god and so i i inspire you guys i inspire you whoever you are wherever you are i inspire you go check out your closet again do you have more shoes than you can wear are some of your shoes now afraid you're afraid to wear them because they have been in the closet so long they may dry rot they may embarrass you on the street that means you have too many too many too many listen identify your shoe not by the style necessarily but by the color ladies can i give you a hint and a tip styles are wonderful styles are amazing but if you go off style, you will always have more styles than you can manage. Make a decision on the basis of color. So if you have black, black can wear with several different styles of dresses. Red, same thing. Brown, same thing. Blue, come on. Even throw in a purple. The Kingston College people will get excited. Hallelujah. But look at color that can go with different things and then just max out. There are some colors that you probably won't, some persons won't wear like orange or pink, but some persons will. But if you go off color, it will give you a guide that will not allow you to go over and above what is, what is necessary. But if you go off style, you will see seven, eight different styles of black shoes. You will see seven or eight different styles of blue shoes. Come on, somebody. And so you will end up with shoe, blue shoes like, whoa, now can we dig deep into why you would want eight or ten different styles or seven or five different styles of black shoe? Because you don't want people to say, watch this, and it's not always that. So I'm not saying this definitively as the only reason. But one of the reasons is I don't want people to say I only have one black shoe. So I have various styles. So when they see me, they will say. When they see me, they will say. When they see me, they will think. When they see me, they will gasp at the different styles, at the diversity of black that I have. Pride. 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 Am I saying you shouldn't have one or two styles of black in your closet? Of course not. I'm not saying that. Follow me in what I'm saying, the principle. Hallelujah. Sister Joan Murray says, true, I have multiple. And the truth is, if you have more shoe than you can wear, even in various styles, you have too many. 
your sh the shoes have become an idol. The shoes have become a representation of greed in your life. Shoes have become a representation of greed in your life. I love suits. I love suits. I have a brother who is into buying and selling clothes. And often, he used to bring me suits um, before COVID. He used to bring me suits at least once or twice a year. He would bring me two or three suits. I have suits in my closet now that I haven't worn for a long time. Some because they are out of style and some because they, they've, um, they've gotten a little big. And Pastor Marshall says she don't want her husband in any big clothes. But they're still in my closet. Why haven't I given them away? When I was in a bigger church where everyone wore suits, um, the, 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 the rich, the poor, and the middle class, the, it was an opportunity for me to give suits to some persons. But now that I'm in a different vein, I have not made the sacrifice. I have not made it a, a, a mission, a mandate to go find someone who is in need of a, of a suit to wear to a wedding or a funeral. These are good, nice suits. I have not made that effort to go find someone to give it to and so they're in my closet and they're getting old in my closet when someone could be wearing them that's greed Rowan Easton wear it that's greed you have these suits there that could be a blessing to someone it's like having food in your cupboard dry rotting it's like having food in your fridge spoiling and you throw it out that's greed greed is not just how much you consume greed is having more than you need and not use it to be a blessing to someone so they can succeed. Hallelujah. Or, yes, Sister Quenda, or to a job interview. They could wear these clothes to a job interview. Hallelujah. There are more than enough poor people. There are more than enough people who are at that borderline. More than enough people who want to come to church but don't have the proper clothing. And we have more than enough. But we have not made an extra effort to seek them out and to be a blessing to them. While we are while we are laughing and while we are saying, wow, look at her shoes. Look at the shoes she wears to work, to school, to church. Can't she do better? And God is saying, but I've given you an opportunity to do better. She wears the exact size like you. Why don't you be a blessing to her? Oh, my shoes are too nice. I can't give away, you know that, that these styles are, are up. When I put my feet in these shoes, I, I, they look so good on me. I can't give this away. That's greed. That's greed. When we have more than we need, that's greed. When we're afraid to be a blessing to others because we think that what we have shows that we succeed, that's greed. That's greed. Can I talk truth and you not be offended? We have to look into ourselves, guys. Let me let me speak it soft because Pastor Marsha says sometimes I'm speaking truth, but the way it sounds makes it sometimes offensive. So I'm going to be calm and I'm going to be as sweet and loving as I can. We have to change. Guys, in order to change the world, in order to change our families, in order to change our communities, we have to begin to look intimately at what are the areas in our lives that satan is using to hold us captive greed slothfulness lack of sacrifice lack of love unconditional love come on lack of faith lack of peace lack of joy in every situation these are things that Satan are using in different ways and in different circumstances to hold us captive. And we have to identify it and stop him in his tracks. We have to stop him. We have to stop him. Hallelujah. We have to stop him. We have to stop him. So let us stop him. But let's begin with us. Let's begin with us. Let's begin with us. Whatever church you go to, whatever situation, um, Red Cross. Red Cross accepts nice clothing. They have thrift shops and, and, and things their stores. There's a Red Cross near you or somewhere. Make the sacrifice. Call the Red Cross. 
Do you need some clothes? Do you need some shoes? I have some nice things. And please, if the shoe, if the if the if the protective layer on the in the bottom of the in the base of the shoe, not underneath it, but with the place where your foot go on, if that is lifting up and and, and and it looks a little tacky, the shoes is still okay, but because it's been put down so long, the the, the bottom part is lifting up and it needs to fix get some glue buy some crazy glue or some patex and glue it down don't take it to the um to the to the to the salvation army or to um or to to, to your church sister and says this shoe needs a little bit fixing it's a good shoe but the, the thing is lifting up and so you can glue it glue it up and take it to her come on somebody amen Glue it up, buy some patics. God is looking at our faithfulness. And listen, I'm talking to me first. Please hear my heart. I'm speaking to me first. God is looking at our faithfulness and our diligence. He's looking at our diligence. And so I have begun to practice, sometimes maybe even to Pastor Marsha's annoyance. She has not said it. I'm not saying she has said it. But I'm practicing. I'm practicing how I think. I'm practicing how I feel. I'm practicing the conversations that I have. I'm practicing how I think about people. I'm trying to develop a heart that is pure, that I think first about positive things concerning people and situations and circumstances. I'm thinking that because someone didn't answer a call or they didn't uh, respond to a WhatsApp or because they didn't say something that, that, that I wanted to hear, that I, my first response is to go to a negative. Why did they have to do this? And maybe they, and then I begin to conjure up a perspective that is based on the negative. I am trying my best. I am not perfect yet. I'm not there yet, but I have set a course that I'm going to try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to try to think positive. I'm going going to try to think like how Jesus thinks about me. Ah, what I want for myself, I'm going to try to give it to others. I'm trying. I'm on that journey because that's the journey of Christ. That's the character and nature of Christ. Being a Christian is not just about how much you pray, how much word you read, how much you fast. That's not just being a Christian. That's not all Christianity is made up of. Being a Christian is not made up of how many people you have prayed for and you have testimonies galore, how many people you have prophesied to. And they say, my God, they cry tears and uh, uh, all manner of things. Being a Christian is not just how many people you have prayed for and they've been delivered, set free and made whole. Being a Christian is walking upright, looking at the little things, the little things, because anyone satan can use people to deliver satan can use people to prophesy but satan cannot cannot and will not use people to walk in righteousness holiness and truth satan will not use you or cause you to walk in a pure mentality purity of heart and soul and so that's where we need to let Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, take control for purity in our soul, purity through our spirit, purity in our thoughts. The rest will come easy. When purity becomes our foundation, hear me as I speak from the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. When purity becomes our foundation, when we think and act in a pure way, the, 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 the prayer life that we have becomes so powerful, heaven shakes when we pray. When we become pure in our hearts, when we pray for the sick, they get delivered and healed in a moment's notice. When we become like Jesus in purity, we become like Jesus in maturity. And when we become like Jesus in maturity, we become like Jesus in miracles for surety. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. And so it's important, people of God, that we don't focus so much on, I prayed for four hours today. That's good. I'm not saying that's bad. It is a good thing. But let's focus on the little things. Because too many of us as Christians have a healthy prayer life, have a healthy Bible knowledge life, have a healthy miracles, signs, and wonders life, have a healthy prophetic life, have a healthy deliverance ministry, but we don't have a healthy soul. 
we don't have a healthy soul. Our soul is still out of control. Our soul is still lustful. Our soul is still slothful. Our soul is our souls are still greedy. Our souls are still angry. Our souls in some instance are even in unforgiveness. Our souls are not at peace. Our soul doesn't have any joy. But we are manifesting externally greatness. And so we think that that's where it is. It's not. It's not. If there is no control of our soul then we may just hear if we continue like that until jesus comes depart from me i never knew you you worker of iniquity our souls must be submitted to righteousness holiness and truth at all times in every situation Somebody says you're ugly. Somebody says you are mean. Somebody tells a lie on you. Your first response must not be to defend yourself, but to ask God, Father, are they speaking the truth? Are they speaking the truth, Lord? Father, am I ugly? Because you says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That means it may not be my outside. Am I responding from an ugly place? When I'm frustrated, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, do I respond from an ugly place, Lord? And that makes me ugly? Help me, Lord. When the Lord says, no daughter, no son, you're good to go, you're okay, that's just Satan trying to get under your skin. That's just Satan trying to, to, to rile you up so that you can become ugly. But right now, in my eyes, you are not ugly. Not inside or out then you can happily walk away even though they're still shouting you're ugly you're no good you'll never make it you'll never get promoted your business will never go through your business will never prosper they will they, they, your family will be under a generational curse you're 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 you're, you're never gonna prosper you're never gonna succeed you're never gonna make it they're speaking but you're walking in joy they're saying things, but like Esther, you are in your secret place, getting your download on what to do from God. Like Daniel, you're, you're before your God saying, You're not paying attention. You're not letting man or external sources and forces dictate your actions. Your actions are dictated by God, by the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? But in order to get to that place, people of God, in order to get to that place, my family, you can't be distracted by the systems and the things and the circumstances of the world. You can't be distracted emotionally by the things that are happening from evil people. You can't be. You have to be focused and steadfast. What is it that God wants you to do? How is it that God wants you to impact that which is happening in your society, in your environment? Governments might be doing evil things, passing evil laws. You see it now. It's happening everywhere. Jamaica is a small country and our governments are passing evil laws. They're contemplating even more evil laws. Over the last four or five years, evil laws have been written into the books federal and state in america in england in canada all over the world governments are passing laws that are evil against the church against the people that voted them in can we do anything about that probably not outside of praying and asking god to intervene but it's a reflection of the end times and so that's not where god necessarily wants us to focus outside of prayer so what am i saying Please, I'm begging you, when the governments, when the presidents and the prime ministers begin to um, sign off on these evil laws, don't get caught up and get emotional and begin to talk and talk and talk and to the point where you're starting to say evil things against your leader. Don't get caught up emotionally in that. Go to God and say, God, I am not in government. I am not an apostle. I'm not a prophet like that to the nations because you can be a prophet to people, a prophet to your church, a prophet to your community. 
but you're not necessarily a Jeremiah prophet or a Nathan prophet that prophesies the presidents and prime ministers. If that's not your call and purpose, then that's not your worry. Father, I thank you that you have all things in your hands, that our governments are blessed by you, covered by you, guarded by you, and directed by you, and anything that doesn't happen according to your will, you have allowed it, and therefore I do not get emotional about it. Because the moment we get sidetracked and distracted by what governments or, um, or the boss at the office is doing, our job doesn't get done. The job God has given us does not get done. Because we're all emotional and we're all into how could they do this thing? How could they pass laws that says that you, you can do whatever you want? How could they pass a law that says a male can use a female bathroom? Exposing his genitalia in, a, in, a, in an environment where women are, opposite sex are. How could they pass that law in good conscience? That is crazy. But if you spend all of your day and all of your time thinking and being consumed by that, the purpose for which you have been anointed, the purpose for which you have been called could easily be getting left behind. Come on. Am I saying you shouldn't care? Of course you should care. Of course you should care. Care about what is happening in your workplace. Care about what your boss is doing. Care. But with God you share, not your co-workers. You cannot be numbered among those who are lambasting the boss or your president or your senator or your governor in a negative way. You should not be numbered among those. Pray for them. Pray that they will turn. Pray that they will change. Or pray that they will come out of power. You can do that too. It doesn't mean that you must pray that they are preserved in the position so they can continue to do evil. Don't pray for them to die. Don't pray for them to continue to lie. Pray for them to turn to the ways of God or pray for God to evict them out of that place and put righteous men and women of God in those seats. So we have options, but one of our options is not to complain, to murmur, to gossip, to speak ill or evil of because bitter and sweet water should not come from the same well amen these are tough things because they are not easy for us to do as human our natural instinct is to respond in a way that demonstrates our annoyance and frustration Recently, we have a hot topic in Jamaica where the government, uh, the government has, 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 has passed, signed a bill for, for to pay themselves over 250 or 240 um, percent increase in salary. Salaries have moved to astronomical figures, and in the eyes of, of people, in the eyes of the people of the country, they have, they're not, they have not even earned from their performance. A 50% increase, much less 240 or 250%. And so there's a big kerfuffle and a big hurrah and a big uproar that's going on, even protests in various places. Because nowhere else in the world and in no company do people who are not performing get a pay increase of astronomical proportion. Nowhere. It is just not happening. But these are things that happen to draw us out. This is how, this is about Christianity, you know. This is an attack on Christianity, but so many of us are ignorant of the devil's devices. Do you have any idea how many Christians have been bitter and not better since this announcement? This one simple announcement, how many Christians have cursed, have called them names, have declared evil things, have said some things or have thought some things about them, have called them wicked, thieves, all kinds of things. It's and, But when sinners do that, guys, when sinners do that, it doesn't matter because they are operating along the line of sin. It's just another sin that they have sinned. When we do it, it's a different thing because Satan tries to tell us in the context of the situation that you're right to feel that way. 
It's an affront to the nation. It's wickedness. It is robbing the people. It is unfair to the teachers and the police and the nurses and the doctors who didn't get any kind of raise um, to substantially to think about. It is unfair to those people. And it is. And that's the big setup. Because he wants us to go against God's word. He wants us to go against God's word. God says we must pray for our leaders, not curse them. That's what God says. He didn't say when they do everything right. He didn't say when they didn't steal or when they, didn't, when they weren't corrupt or when they did not lead gangs or be a part of gangs. He didn't say when they, when they, didn't, when they don't pass laws that, that fight against the church or shut down the church. He didn't say that. He just said, pray for your leaders. Do not speak evil of them. That's his command to us. The moment we start to justify going against God's word because it feels good, it's the moment we have become God. We have taken over the position of God and we have said, God, what you ask me to do concerning these wicked men and women is not good enough. I think you missed this one. I'm going to be God in this moment. I'm going to take over because you missed it. You missed it. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to tell people. I'm going to call people. I'm going to sign petitions. I'm going to do what I need to do to demonstrate that you, God, what you asked me to do, that's not right. It failed. You missed it. You missed it, God. I know more than you in this situation. This is my country. You don't live here. You don't have to deal with these laws that they're passing. You don't have to deal with these things that they're doing. You don't have to deal with the tight economy. You don't have to deal with these, 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 these uh, men in women's bathroom. Men passing you dressed as women. You don't have to deal with these things, God. I have to deal with them every day. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over and do what is right. Because you don't know what is right. Oops. Oops. And so I have set out on a mission, my own personal journey. I'm not even telling you that you need to be on that journey. Jesus has to convince you by the Holy Spirit that what he has said in his word, what he desires about us, righteousness, holiness, and truth is for you as well. What does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? What does righteousness, holiness, and truth look and feel and taste like? Let me tell you, it tastes bitter. Righteousness, holiness, and truth is bitter. It sounds in your ears like a voice saying you're an idiot. You're a fool. That's not how you're supposed to react to that. That's not what you're supposed to think. That's not what you're supposed to say. You're supposed to get angry, cross, miserable. You're supposed to tell them a piece of your mind. That's what righteousness, holiness, and truth sounds like when you try to establish it, to live by it. A voice is always speaking against it. How could you let them walk over you like that? How could you let her tell you that and you not do anything? Are you an idiot? You graduated from university, you're not an idiot. Because the voice that you are hearing is designed to counter the word that you know. Come on, somebody should write that down. We don't hear God's voice. Can I just take it to another level? <laughs> yes, brother Marlon say you're a punk. Yes. Why didn't you respond to what that person said to you? You're a punk. Everybody else is cussing the government. You're a punk. You're talking about pray for them. Pray for what? You're a punk. The moment any voice, any feeling, any emotion, any thought comes that causes you to go against God's word and you obey, that's when you become a punk. The only time we become punks is when we take matters into our own hands and go against God's word. That's when we truly become a punk. 
You are never a punk when you obey God. And every punk quickly becomes a skunk. Why do I say that? Because the skunk carries a stench and that stench is not accepted in God's nostrils. Amen. So if you become a true punk, then you become a skunk. And the stench goes up into God's nostrils. And he acts on that. Or sometimes he just folds his hands. And what Satan do to our lives. I remember yesterday, I'm going to close now and go into some word. I remember yesterday, I'm in a particular group and I saw... A, 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 a thing come through in that group about someone who's um, who is having some demonic issues, a child having some serious demonic issues, demonic manifestations, levitations, involuntary movement of the body parts, involuntary movement of things in the room, and all these kinds of things. I mean, serious, serious um, demonic uh, processes. Come on, serious demonic attack serious serious demonic attack and one person who was um in the group because this person was crying out for help was saying we have to find out what door was open what kind of witchcraft was engaged what kind of 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 of, of, of abuse may have taken place that opened the door maybe the child was raped maybe the child was taken to a older man who then had um penetration of any kind with her whether with a uh, finger or any, any other body part, please. I don't want to get graphic, but I want you to understand what I'm saying. Maybe something happened. Maybe someone on her behalf, maybe someone put her name on a grave and released demonic forces after her because it's not just one way. There are many ways. But if the door is open and it stays open and you go only to deal with the surface of the issue, if you go only to say, I'm going to help this girl, but then she's delivered and she goes back into the environment, her house is empty, swept clean, but the demon comes back and see that it is clean and empty, he goes away and comes back with seven demons stronger than he ever was. And the state of that girl is worse than it ever was. There are too many times when our emotions lead us to deal with a situation the symptoms and not the root cause we must deal with the root cause of our issues in our lives so that we can deal with the root cause of issues in other people's lives because the root cause is more important than the manifestation why because the root cause is the reason for the manifestation amen when god says be not ignorant of the devil's device what is it that he's doing undercover that is producing something out here? Every gunman, every prostitute, every liar, every thief, every unbeliever, everyone with a wicked heart that manifests that wicked heart, every slothful person, every greedy person, every person that goes against the word of God, there is a root. There's a root that holds that tree in place that produces that fruit. If you focus only on the fruit, you'll miss the root. And that's the truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Brother Marlon, we have to dig out the root. Don't worry about the fruit. Dig out the root. Because if the root becomes truth, then it will change the fruit. But if the, true, if the fruit cannot be changed, then you must dig out the root and put it to fire and plant a new tree so that you can get root of truth and hence good fruit. That's what God desires of us, that we become root of truth so that we can bear good fruit, that men may see our good works or eat of our good fruit and glorify our Father who art in heaven. Selah. 
Amen. 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 I hope that you are encouraged to, 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 to just check and see how we think, how we act, what are some things around us that need to be a reflection of our covenant with God, a representation of our righteousness, holiness, and truth. It is in our space that we first get better so that we can do better externally. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. So we're, 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 we're going into the word. Father, as we go into your word in Second Peter chapter 1, we ask, O oh God, that you will give us insights and revelation. We ask, O oh God, that by your Holy Spirit, you will minister to us this morning, this day, so that we can truly do things your way and your way only. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at uh, verse 3 that says his divine power, power that God has, power that God has before he created us, power that God used to create us, power that God has shared with us. Come on, glory to God. His divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. That means his divine power has manifested in us as the Holy Spirit and there is nothing that is not in the Holy Spirit that can contribute to, contribute to our life needs and our godliness needs. Amen? Hallelujah. So it's not that God has 10 cars and 6 houses and, and, and billions of dollars laid up for us. No, he doesn't have those things laid up for us. Pastor, what are you saying? No, he doesn't. God doesn't have a house put down for me. He doesn't have a car put down for me. He has the Holy Spirit in me. And in the Holy Spirit, everything that I need for life and godliness is in him. He can say, house come forth and it comes. But in order for these things to come forth, there has to be a belief and a convincing of our soul and our spirit and our body in his divine power and that divine power is in us and when we believe that receive that and can conceive that then by faith we will produce as he says that which is not as though it were so we must understand what that divine power is so when we're saying, God has my house put down for me already, I just have to walk into it. God has my car already, I just need to go see it on the lot. That has some element of truth. But we must know what his divine power does. So his divine power doesn't say, go to the lot, it's there. His divine power says, Father, I thank you that my car is on that lot. Which car? Any car? No, the, that car, the white car, the red car, the blue car, wood interior. Come on, hallelujah. 2.5 liter engine, seven seater to carry my whole family. You are the one that dictate what is produced because God says, let there be and there was from his divine power. He didn't just say, let there be whatever. He said, let there be light. Because he could say, let there be, and the thought was in his head, and there would be still nothing. Darkness would still be upon the face of the earth. The spirit would still be hovering, waiting for an instruction. What instruction are you giving, people of God? His divine power is waiting for us to use it to give instruction so that things can come into manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the summary of verse 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Quenda says, ask and it shall and you shall receive. So you must ask specifically. Remember the best example that we give. Do not just ask God for a wife. God, I need a wife. You must know what kind of wife you need, what kind of husband you need. Because you may ask, watch this, you might say, but God knows everything about, the, about my desires already. If I ask God just for a husband, he will not give me, if I ask for bread, he will not give me a stone. I agree. But remember, God 
doesn't function in the universe alone. God doesn't function in the universe alone. And so if you ask God for a husband, just as an example, just as an example, Satan also hears when you ask God for a husband. Satan also knows based on your history, come on, what type of men you like. What type of men you used to like when you were in the world? Tall, olive, or Hershey brown. Come on. Curly hair, thin lips, straight nose, small ears, brilliant, hard working, have some substance. Come on, a good communicator. God knows all of the, 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 and Satan knows all of the tendencies that you have and the things that used to impress you. So he's going to put together his best marine spirit. He's going to put together his best marine spirit representation. That's right, six feet or six feet one, six feet two, just about perfect. Six feet is average. Six feet one, six feet two, just a little towering that when you have on your high heels and you go into that expensive or exquisite uh, ball at the Pegasus or at the Hilton or at the Courtly or at the Ritz Carlton, come on, glory to God, you're looking good because he's just enough height above you, chest out to here. Satan is going to send what you call a Thor. You know Thor from the movie? He's going to send an Iron Man or a Thor. That one with the, the high cheekbone and the and the perfectly symmetric face and, and, and the hair just blowing in the wind and he's just so alarmingly handsome. Satan is gonna send that one and you're gonna say, My God, ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I asked you for a husband and you gave me woo wee. You're not even gonna check to see if it's God. Because he meets all of the criteria of your old life. Or is somebody getting something this morning? This one that Satan sends is going to meet all of the criteria of your old desires. Everything to the T. And so you're not even going to check with God. You're going to say, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When some people say to you, like me, are going to say, sister, pray. Pray, sister, pray. Ask God if this is the one. You can say, pastor, you can go and talk. I'm not coming back to Fort Watch until I get married because you trying to block my blessing. You trying to rob me of what God has given me. So I'm not even going to listen to you again. I'm not calling you. I'm not checking in no spirit because this must be God. There is no perfect man in the world except this one. And only God makes perfect. And so God has given me exactly what I want, but you didn't ask for that. You just said, God, give me a man. So how come? Hear me carefully. Hear me carefully. God is not interested in what suits your eyes or your soul. He's interested in what suits your purpose and what keeps your spirit in balance. Those are the key things. Now, if what fulfills your purpose, come on, your ministry, God's glory also is pleasing to your eyes, then glory to God. Glory to God. God knew from day one that I love, hallelujah, a, 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 a beautiful woman. But a beautiful woman, after I became immersed in God, was not on the high priority of my list. And so God gave me an amazing woman that fits all of my spiritual needs. And the fact that when I look at her, she fits my, my fleshly needs as well. Glory to God. But that was not the key focus. I'm saying to you, if the key thing, come on, I'm teaching you how to identify men and women. I may use a female example, but it's both men and women. Because it is easier for a man to see an amazingly beautiful and quote-unquote sexy woman than it is for a woman to see that in a man. Because men are not taking care of themselves these days on block. Most men want a sexy woman, but he himself have a keg. He's not fit. He's not working out. He spends all of his time either reading the word, praying, or working, 
are doing foolishness, enjoying himself. He's not working out, making sure he's fit. So when he gets this young, fit, um, healthy woman that he's so desirous of, he's <sighs> breathing hard and tired every minute and can't do what he's supposed to do. Can't do anything around the house. He's just sitting in the couch like a couch potato. A woman doesn't want that. Just like you don't want a woman who doesn't meet any of your criteria either. So we have to be real and utilize his divine power. Come on. It sounds like I'm talking about man and woman's story, but I'm talking about the divine power. If the divine power is not utilized to the glory of God, Satan will creep in and give us divine flower. We're looking to use divine power and Satan will mess us up with divine power flower. Amen. So we must know what we want, speak what we want, and ensure that it is according to God's will. According to God's will. If what we are looking for is predominantly about external, then we are asking the wrong God. We are asking the God of this system of things, who is into flesh, who is into what our eyes see, and what our mind thinks not into what our spirit connects to not deep crying out to deep amen hallelujah <laughs> jesus if we if we yes brother marlon say if we get the list of things that is according to what we used to desire we may end up curse god we may end up saying god what is this you see this handsome six foot two or six foot as 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 someone said um uh, hunk of of of, of bodybuilding mass in our beds uh, in your bed and you're trying to you're trying to find a way to to wave a magic wand you're begging god to beam him up like scotty from kirk enterprise star trek because outside of looking good he meets none of the other criteria he doesn't even want to go to church you never even stop to find out if he loves God because you fell in love with him. You didn't care if he loves God. And by the time you find out that he doesn't love God, it's too late. It's too late. Guys, let's focus on his divine power working in us and through us. Amen? All right, verse 4. Hallelujah. Woo. Man, look how verse 3 just come up with a whole different <laughs> service again. Eh, Sister Quinda. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sister Quinda says, not doing that ever again. Well done, woman of God. You have learned your lesson. That's it. All of us have done it. I have done it as a man. Hallelujah. Let's not do it again. People, you who have not yet done it, especially young people who are hearing me in the background, or if you're joined with your parents or parent, please don't make the same mistake we did. Don't make the same mistake that I and Quenda made. And Pastor Marsha, Pastor Marsha is public in stating the mis mistakes she made in looking at tall, dark, and handsome instead of filled with God, filled with love, filled with humility filled with purpose let's not make that mistake let's rely on his divine power because that divine power has already given us all that we need for life and godliness learn from our mistakes and walk the good road amen so verse 4 says hallelujah through these he has given us his very great and precious promises and so through his divine power, he has given us, come on, hallelujah, his very great and precious promises. Everything. So you see that this is the, this word, all that I have been um, uh, exegesing and expanding on in verse 3 is confirmed in verse 4. <laughs> Instead of tall, brown, and handsome. <laughs> Stephen, watch it, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of knocking yourself there a little bit. <laughs> you tall, brown, and handsome. Glory to God. But if you see this, guys, how we've been just 
pulling apart verse 3 without going into verse 4 and then when we get to verse 4 verse 4 is a confirmation of all that we were saying about verse 3 he says through these things through his divine power through through knowledge of him who called us and through and by his own glory and goodness come on through all of these things god has given us very great precious promises so all of our God's promises have been given to us. But what has God promised us? Has God promised us a tall, brown, handsome man? Is that what God promised us? Because I can tell you, physically, I was not what Pastor Marsha expected. Are you hearing me? But she was, she was at, a, at a place where she was saying, God, whatever you give me, Whatever you give me, I will accept. These are my these are the things that I'm asking for. Spiritual things. A man of God. A man of purpose. A man of substance in you. A man who is led by you. A man uh, she wanted a man close to her age. God mash up and tear out that page. Come on. If she was set and one who she wanted to grow old with instead of one who is growing old before her. We would not be married today. You hear me, guys? These are serious things. Serious, serious things. Hallelujah. <laughs> guys, I'm telling you, some people are misbehaving on Facebook like, whoa. I'm glad that the TikTok people and the um and the Instagram people are are well behaved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so um it says that through these all the great precious promises of God have been given to us. God will give us exactly what we need, but we must know and trust Him. We must know and trust Him. You might ask for somebody six foot two, look like Stephen. Because you have seen Stephen and you say, yes, but God only made one Stephen. God only made one Stephen. Come on. So your, 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 your person, your fit might be five feet ten. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. God would never give me someone five feet ten. Never. Never. I like six feet and above that's what i like six feet and above five feet ten is not my desire and god promised to give me the desires of my heart well listen all of who god have leave in the in the in the um in the vineyard all of the the, the trees that are left the fruit trees that are left all of the men that are in the container left that are six foot two six feet and above are not God's best gift to you. God's best gift that he has now available is five feet ten, filled with his spirit, filled with his word, filled with his power, filled with his love, filled with his glory, ready to change your story. Will you accept one who will make your life better for the rest of your life or one who will look good now but cause pain for the rest of your life? Do you want a gift from Satan are from God because God's precious promises won't always look good to your eyes but it will be good to the wise oh Stephen you should bring an offering for that one come on Holy Ghost need an offering for that praise God hallelujah <laughs> hey glory to God yes that's a drop the mic huh? <laughs> praise God thank you Holy Ghost and so um, the, the end of verse 4 says, uh, So that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. My God, wow, wow. It's almost like God is just teaching us word by word, line by line. He says, if we look how we were explaining it further up 
we were saying that if we if we have these evil desires, if our desires are based on flesh, based on our past, based on Coca-Cola bottle shape, based on an intelligence rather than covenant with God, based on what one has rather than who one is. Come on, glory to God. It's a corrupt desire. It's a corrupt desire. Should we not want our husbands or our wives to be um, contributing members of society? Shouldn't I want my wife to be able to wash, cook, and clean in the same way that I can wash, cook, and clean so that when I can't do it, she can do it? Of course, that's not an unreasonable request. Should I desire for my wife to have a job so that she can... And this is just an example now. I'm not saying that that is what is in my perfect situation. But I'm just speaking on behalf of all humans shouldn't a wife expect that her husband should have a job should work and should whatever <laughs> and to pat say i love my five foot four with with the love of god and i love me and he loves me too praise god hallelujah antipat it's a good thing that so many people don't love five foot four men because then you could get your gift that god have instead of everybody rushing to try and steal him praise god hallelujah and so we have to be careful that our 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 desires are not considered by god to be evil evil desires amen we must be careful check our desires check what we are asking god for check it to see if what we're asking for the reason we have not yet gotten it is because it is an evil desire go back and read verse 4 again go through verse 4 with a fine-tooth comb and then ask ourselves all of us the question is it that we're asking for financial breakthrough because we have evil desires is it that we're asking for a certain type of man or a certain type of woman because of evil desires and not according to the desires of God because that may be the reason, one of the reasons, at least, why there is a delay in the answer. Of course, there can be other delays, yeah. as a, other, other delays because of the Prince of Persia, or the Prince of the Power of the Air, like it was with Daniel. But we first, the first thing that we must check, motive. is it my motive that is blocking God's delivery yeah. of what I desire? Huh? Hannah. Like Hannah. Yes, that's correct. Hannah was crying out to God for a son, but her motive was just to shame Penina. Her motive was to get back at Penina. Her motive was to, 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 to prove to Elkanah that she was also a good woman who can produce. And God was saying, hmm, you have a whole lot of crying and bawling and knows not tears on the, on the, on the temple floor. To do before you get it and the moment she got it the moment her motive changed her change come oh praise God that can preach that can preach let us check our motives check our desires check our agenda to see if it lines up with God and if it does watch God work watch God move because that's the kind of God he is He's waiting on our agreement with his word so that we can be heard. Amen. Praise God. Let's not embrace any evil desire, man. Let our desires be for his glory. And he will answer and give us a story. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. This has been really exciting. I don't know about you, but I loved, hallelujah, what the Holy Spirit did today in the name of Jesus Christ. He just keeps getting better and better every day. What a God, what a God. Holy Spirit, we bless you. We thank you for your revelation of the word, for your encouragement to your people, for just highlighting even the very things in our closets, for highlighting how we need to live as you want us to live, by you, for you, through you, to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Holy Spirit all that you have done today and all that we will walk in in your way in jesus mighty name sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now as we eat of the body of christ and drink of his blood 
May it be to our body's health and strength, prosperity and good success to every area of our lives so that we can be a blessing to our family, our community and our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the, the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh my God. I have some of the best family members. Sister Dorrit said, word sweet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Cheers to you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, drink. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. I hope truly that you were blessed, encouraged to just make changes and to do things differently and to be focused and steadfast in the way that God desires for us because that's the way that if we walk in it, we will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we are desirous of hearing. That's what we are sacrificing to hear. Not depart from me, but well done. Amen. Praise God. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you and we love the world. I want to Hallelujah. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade and Rowan Wade saying, have a super fantastic day. Please remember to do something good for someone today. Make a sacrifice uh, to be a blessing where you can as you are able. Also, please remember um, our fourth watch link up, all white link up this Friday evening at um, 6, honey, or 7? 7, 7 at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. I should know this by now, but because it is for me, it is not at the top of my mind. I don't put things at the top of my mind that I am, to, I am benefiting from. And so, praise God. I still am asking if any uh, person can assist with uh, just making this happen in a way that everyone can be blessed because we're not charging. And so we're asking persons to donate as you are able, as you can so that um, we can really have a good time and persons can have um, something to eat and drink and we just hang out and have a great time, um, like a mini reunion. Amen? And so we give God thanks for those who have, um, have sown into the, into the project al as already and those who have uh, been a blessing uh, to send a gift or two to me personally. I thank you so much. I appreciate you. God bless you. And may everything that you do for this ministry and for us and for me be a, a bone to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. If you want to contribute, please don't wait until Friday. If you want to contribute to the event on Friday, don't wait until Friday. Things have to be purchased and put in place mm -hmm. from now. So if you can, if you are able, um, just um, and you want to, you can just send stuff to, to Pastor Marsha uh, predominantly, so that um, she can do all the things that needs to be done. I like I don't like to be involved in that kind of planning section. <laughs> Praise God! But thank you guys so much. Love you. Have a great day. Know that it is well. You are loved and you are blessed and highly favored. Go make a difference in the world today. In Jesus' name. Bye.